In this video, I will provide you with a few examples and things to consider if you're thinking about moving a load-bearing exterior or interior wall for a single-story home um, a few inches. Now, some of this stuff is just not going to make any sense financially, and that would probably be the first two examples in the video. Um, but uh, the other one, the original reason why I, I'm making the video, someone had a question, um, that's going to deal with where the ceiling joists are lapping over an interior load-bearing wall. But I thought I would throw this in there. Um, I've had people ask me these questions in the past. I never did a video on it, and uh, I figured this is going to be something that people are going to be viewing for a variety of different reasons. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need to keep in mind about an exterior load-bearing wall is that it, it, it is going to require a footing, a concrete footing, to distribute the weight from above into the soil. So this is the, the number one thing. Going to need a concrete footing. And if we move the wall in three inches, um, you can see here it's not going to be a problem for the concrete footing not going to be a problem for the ceiling joist you know but it is going to be a problem for the for the waterproofing or the flashing most of the time when you have a wall exterior wall that's even the outside of the wood framed wall is even with a concrete foundation you can use waterproofing or water resistant materials to come down a little farther past the top this will allow the water to drain off of the um, side of the building and then safely away when it's when you move it in you might have to get some metal some type of flashing to um, drape over the edge of the concrete curb here so that's going to be one thing to consider ceiling joists of course aren't going to be a problem Roof rafters yes conventional roof framing this is going to be a problem especially when the um, seat cuts on the roof rafters are no longer working or, or sitting on top of the wall I should say and if you have a truss roof um, this might not be a problem you might be able to move the truss um, the wall in three inches and not even affect the trusses but uh, to move it out that would be a different story and keep in mind I'm not a structural engineer these are just examples of uh, construction methods I either thought of or I've seen uh, done before in the past. So, um, you know, that is the worst thing I think with uh, some of these um, YouTube videos is people come in and they say, here's what, here's what you can do, and you can't do it all the time. So um, to solve the problem here, you could always add some type of a shaped block. You know, this would transfer the load from the roof rafter a little more effectively. It might actually need to be bolted together. To me, you might need to have a bolt through the block and, and through the ceiling joist and through the roof rafter and the ceiling joist also. Now let's go ahead and move the wall out three inches. This is going to require a, a concrete footing, additional structural support, obviously. And how that will be done will, of course, will be up to you and your engineer. And it will create more problems for the roof rafters. Um, if you take a big notch out of the roof rafter like this, you could actually reduce the size of the roof rafter. So uh, here we have a 2 by 8 measuring from here to here. And uh, if we measured from here to here, we might have a 2 by 6 or something in between a 2 by 6 and a 2 by 8. And that might not make the engineer happy. So not suggesting this won't work. Um, but uh, at least you got a couple of uh, ideas or opinions of mine why, at least one of them. So ceiling joists aren't sitting on top of the wall. This might not be a problem. You might be able to um, bolt them to the roof rafters. You might be able to put a block in here with some uh, framing anchors or even put some type of a hanger around it um, to um, support the ceiling joist. And of course, now for the reason why I made the video, the individual wanted to know if they could move the wall over a little bit. And I might have already made a video on this. 
Um, I know I made one um, for getting a little creative and people picked it apart. And uh, if you want to see that, uh, put a comment in and I'll, I'll find a link to it. But uh, I think it's on the website uh, for remodeling. Go to the uh, remodeling tab and then to the framing tab, framing link, and then click on ceilings. I'm pretty sure it's in there. But uh, this is a common method lapping the ceiling joist over a load-bearing wall. And of course, we have a concrete footing underneath everything supporting it. The wall should be centered or at least close to centered over the concrete footing. Now let's go ahead and move the wall over a little bit. Now I don't think this is going to be a problem if, as long as it's in this area. Because um, if you think about it, an exterior wall footing, which usually has more of a heavier load on it, um, the wall goes all the way to the edge. So that's the only reason why I'm providing that suggestion that it won't be a problem. So, you know, again, I know everybody doesn't like to hear me say the engineer thing 500 times, so I just won't say it this time. So you can see here where we're lapped. Um, we're, the ceiling joists are still sitting on top of the wall framing and not a, not a problem with this. And it might not be a problem here as long as the ceiling joist is sitting on top of the wall a minimum distance of an inch and a half. An inch and a half is usually the minimum distance a load-bearing um, object, a load-bearing framing component, roof rafter, ceiling joist, beam, um, can sit on a wall to transfer the load effectively. So inch and a half from the edge to here. Now if we move the wall a little too far, you might need to check to make sure that the ceiling joist um, is still within an acceptable rating or for its span. So let's say that a 2x6 spans 13 feet and a 2x8 spans 14 feet. And you move this wall over a little bit and you're already at your maximum distance for the 2x6, then you might need to replace it and install a 2x8 in, um, for all of these boards here. So keep that in mind. And of course the fact that it might no longer be on the footing. And if that does happen, you might need to install an additional concrete footing underneath the load-bearing wall. Now when I say might have to, um, all I can say, all I can offer with something like this is I've seen people just build walls right on top of a concrete floor slab. I've seen them do it with a variety of things, patios, porches, you name it. And uh, I've never never really seen any big problems uh, from it. And, and if you have any pictures of something where there was a problem, feel free to email them to me. With all the home repairs I've done in the past, um, for some, I never got called out and someone said, hey, we've got a um, load-bearing wall that someone moved um, and it's um, created a three-inch sag in our concrete foundation or a one-inch sag. I've just never seen it. Not saying it's not possible, just uh, something that, uh, um, you know, I haven't seen. So a lot of people come in and they do a project like this as long as the ceiling joists are working out and they don't need to um, change the lumber out you know, then um, they can go ahead and move the wall. They usually feel fine with a concrete foundation. And again, you know, I can't stress this enough that I'm not a structural engineer and uh, this is not structural engineering information. These are just examples of things that might possibly work on your project. And the main reason why I made this video, the first part of the video about the exterior walls, I know that's not going to be a real common thing for people to uh, do, but I just kind of wanted to point out the um, what it would look like to give you an idea, because I know a lot of people have no idea. They just want to move the wall. I can't tell you how many times as a contractor someone would call me up and say, can you move this wall two inches? Yes, yeah, going to cost you $15,000. Oh, I'm not doing it. Well, yeah, hopefully you can watch this video and say, you know what? I don't think this is going to be as easy as a project or it is going to be um, a project uh, that's not going to be too, too difficult to do 
and then give you the inspiration to proceed with the project or to say, forget it, I'm not spending that kind of money.